peace infinite waters diving deep once again welcome to another episode of the q and a's if you are a new member oh boy we got some news for you take off your shoes take off your coat put it in the room over there can i get a hello there we're gonna dive deep now this is where we go behind the scenes. I do a lot of videos on the main channel, but really this is a space where I answer your, that's right, your personal question. Each and every one of your questions, I will answer. I do this out of my heart because I just wanna give back even more. So if you have a question, because I get thousands of emails every single day, write in the subject heading, Infinite Waters question, answer it right now. Okay, and then I'm gonna look at it and say, mm, no, I'm not, just kidding. I will answer it because I'm, I'm, I'm nice like that. Okay, so let's go to the first question. It's a family issue. Someone says that they told their parents they don't believe in the religious ideals they were raised in. And this has created a whole wave of conflict, drama, arguments. They're feeling really bad about it. They don't know what to do. And they wanted to know if I could share any insight. Okay, what happens when you speak the truth to a family member and they ain't got time for that? What are we gonna do? I always say, nobody is an island and my family support me 100%. That's the only reason I can do what I do today. But it wasn't always perfect, right? I had to show them who I really was. When we talk of the family, <laughs> the family we have are our guardians, our custodians. They take care of us. They change your nappy when you're crawling around in diapers, right? Be thankful. They pick up after you when you're throwing around all your rubbish when you're growing up. And, right? Our family do a whole lot for us. They feed us, they clothe us. To a certain extent, they are the first primary gods we have. That is why a lot of us look up to our parents. We seek their approval. And if we don't get their approval, we feel bad. Why? Because we have just disrespected God, right? Parents, family have that much influence over us. I realized that along my journey. Now, when we talk of conflict, from voicing how you really feel. Happened to me along my journey, right? I told my mom, I don't wanna to go to church. She said, what? I said, yeah, that's right, you heard me. Want me to say it again? And it was very difficult. I said it in the most compassionate way, by the way, not just like that. I said, mom, I said, mom, I don't wanna to go to church, I'm sorry. I know this is gonna piss you off. I knew it already. I was trembling in my boots. I was like, oh my gosh. Do you know what this is gonna do to our relationship? I thought, okay, now my mom's gonna look down on me. A lot of us, we feel we are gonna get abandoned, disowned, and sometimes that is what happens. Don't worry about it. They'll let you back in the house. When we realize that Many of us, we are living in different generations. The generation of our parents, essentially, is very different to the generation of ourselves. Especially if you are <laughs> this new millennial generation, right? So, realize you have to be very brave. You owe it not only to your family, but you owe it to yourself to always speak from your true authenticity. Let me repeat that. You owe it not only to your family,
but to yourself to always speak your true authenticity. Start raising those eyebrows. Start creasing that forehead. <laughs> because it is going to feel very, very uncomfortable for not only you, but for the family member you tell and you break the news to. Maybe you don't follow their way of life, their, maybe you don't adhere to their values. You want to break out, you want to be free. I don't blame you. The front door's that way. <laughs> don't do it, do it. Okay, that's the voices going through your head. Don't do it, do it. Now, the only thing that keeps us from really expressing ourselves to our parents is fear. I say, let love guide you, not fear. Realize that actually, the great paradox of expressing how you really feel to your parents is that they will respect you afterwards even more. Your connection, relationship with your parents is going to grow tenfold. Why? Because once you show your family who you really are, it's a make or break decision they have to make. They are either going to say, come here, come here, Michelle, come here, whatever your name is, Tom, standard name, give me a hug. And you're like, thank you, mom. Thank you, dad. Thank you, sister. Thank you, brother. Thank you, niece. Thank you, nephew. Oh, you're doing a whole song with them, right? So, and now you live happily ever after. Doesn't always go like that, I'm afraid. Sometimes you do that and it's like, get out of my house. And you're like, but before I do, let me at least take my studio with me. I'm gonna need to do a lot of podcasts about this. That's perfectly fine. But just remind yourself, generally speaking, most parents' love is unconditional for their child. That is in a perfect setting. Not in all cases, but in a large majority of cases. So realize a lot of parents, they do see their children with compassion. It's all about how you start talking to your parents. Ask yourself, am I coming from a place of compassion? Or am I coming from a place of anger? You see, if you go to your parents in a very aggressive way because you just want to get out what you have to say, that is going to trigger something in them to react just like how you are acting. If you go in, in, a, go in, in a very calm and peaceful way, okay, now you're going to get them in the mood, but also, don't tell them when they're just up <laughs> when they're just unloading all of the shopping out of the car they've just been fired from their job they're sweating and then you go and tell them that right chances are they're going to be pissed off which is if they want to do that that's fine why not tell them when they are sitting somewhere in a very relaxed place maybe you're on holiday they're having a good time they're smiling mom hey Right? It's like certain people who say I'm gay to their parents. What are their parents going to say? Certain people say I'm going to get married to this beautiful woman. Normally parents are happy with that. Sometimes parents are happy with when you tell them, hey, I just quit my job. But most times they're not. They're like, okay, you're going to pay the rent. I don't care how you're going to find the money. Go and do it right now. Be brave. And realize that if you are living in shame, guilt, this can't help you become your greatest version. You've got to spill the beans essentially. And then let me know how you get on. Okay, I hope that helped. Let's go to the second question. Someone wrote in, this is the love connection baby, how to keep a relationship. Now when you're single, you want a relationship. When you're in a relationship, you want to leave. Not in all cases, I'm just kidding. It depends, if you're with your soulmate, you wanna stay. Of course you do. Who's making you, who's making you breakfast? Who's massaging you, right? Okay, 
So let me share with you what helped me along my journey. Now, I always talk about the five pillars of a great relationship. You've heard this time and time again, but here's one more time for you, because I love you guys. <laughs> Communication, right? That's how to keep a relationship in a nutshell. If you're not communicating, chances are the relationship is gonna be flushed down the toilet. I'm sorry. And then flushed down again. I'm sorry. And then flushed down again. I'm sorry. You're gonna keep saying sorry because you're flushing your relationship down the toilet. Number two is appreciation. If you can appreciate your partner, at least take them on a cruise every month. No, I'm just kidding. You can if you want. They'll thank you for it. That's a good sign. Small things go a long way. Women love to receive flowers. Men also love to receive flowers and some chocolates. Essentially, we all want the same thing. We want to, we want to, <laughs> we want our partner to show us they care. Not just tell us they care, but actually show us physically, right? With their time and attention. So ask yourself, are you giving time and attention to your partner? Number three, passion. Do you still have passion for the relationship? Or are you very less affair? Are you not really lighting that flame of love anymore? Are you getting complacent? Are you being dishonest? And that's the fourth pillar, trust. Do you trust your partner? That is how to keep a relationship. You gotta have a lot of trust. Now, growing up, if you never trusted yourself, chances are you're gonna get into a relationship and you're gonna be Facebook stalking your partner. Bad idea, because when they find out, they are not only gonna slap you, they're gonna say, who the hell am I with? This control freak. People wanna be free in a relationship. That's what a relationship is all about. Trust, compassion, and love in a perfect setting. Anyway. And number five is pajama party. Oh, pajama party is what I call fun. If you're having a lot of fun with your partner, that's a wonderful thing. That's a beautiful thing. That's an amazing thing, right? If you're having fun with your partner, it really shows the relationship is gonna last longer than a week. That's a good sign. If you're not, chances are it might be finished by the end of this video. Make sure you can still both make each other laugh. Be silly sometimes, be fun, be joyous sometimes. Don't take yourself so seriously. Well, take your partner seriously, and they should take you seriously, but in a very fun and funny way, if you get my drift, right? If you apply all of those five pillars of a great relationship into your life, you are gonna maintain a great relationship. And there you have it. The next question, the next question we received is, is patience necessary to gain happiness? Hmm, that's a good one. Well, I always talk of radical action, okay? So let's, let's, let's go into it. A great benefit of being patient, especially when we talk about becoming your greatest version. Did you see that Guinness advert? All good things come to those who wait. And you're waiting here and people are just throwing apple pies at you. But at least you can eat them, right? It could be rocks. Never mind. It's wonderful to be patient. See, patience cultivates a deeper intimacy with yourself. The problem is when you start waiting too long. When you start living life in the waiting room solely, you become very lazy. You feel that everything has to come to you instead of laying your intention onto the universe, instead of laying your imprint onto the universe, which is the most powerful way to become your greatest version. So what I do along my journey is I am patient on a Monday, I am impatient on a Tuesday, patient on a Wednesday, impatient on Thursday, patient on Friday, impatient on Saturday, and then I'm patient again on Sunday because it's the day of rest. <laughs> 
Fuse being patient with impatient. Fuse action with inaction. And this will help you become your greatest version. There are certain times when we need to wait. And there are certain times when we need to act. Can I? No, that's not the right time to do it. Wait for it. Okay, so there you have it in a nutshell. Much love to all the people diving deep to the Q&As. If you've got a question, email me, infinitewaters at gmail.com. And most of all, have a wonderful week. We are out here, we're in here, whatever. Infinite Waters, diving deep once again. Stay well, stay healthy.